Giants in the Earth is a novel by Ole Edvard Ralvog, published in Norwegian in 1924 and in English in 1927. It is the first in a trilogy Ralvog wrote based on his own and his wife's family's experience as Norwegian immigrants, establishing a life in the Dakota territories. The story begins with a description of the natural landscape as a caravan pushes through the plain. Per Hansa is leading his family through the Dakotas, carrying everything they own with them, which is not much. His wife, Bere, is pregnant. Left behind after their wagon is damaged, the Hanses must search through the wilderness for the rest of the caravan. Bere is worried they are lost and will never find the caravan or camp, leaving them to perish in the open. They make camp at night, but Per Hansa, unable to sleep, goes out scouting. He finds evidence of a large camp, leading him to believe they are close to the caravan. At the camp, Per Hansa's friends worry that he and his family have died. When the Hanses arrive, they are relieved, and quickly deduce that Per Hansa led his family too far west. Per Hansa gathers with Hans and Sorin Alsa, Severt and Chertsey Tonsatin, and Henry and Sam Solemn to celebrate what they see as their good fortune in acquiring this land. Bere, however, does not share their enthusiasm. Per Hansa inspects his lot and discovers that it contains an Indian burial mound. This means local tribes may be offended, but Perhansa is not worried, he travels to Sioux Falls to register his ownership. He then plows the land, preparing to farm, and constructs a simple mud house and barn. A group of Indians arrives, and panic sweeps the settlement, but Perhansa, noticing one of the Indians has an infected wound, helps to heal it. The grateful Indians give him a pony in return. One day the settlement discovers that all of their cows have stampeded away, panic grips the settlers. Per Hansa volunteers to retrieve the livestock, but Beret is worried and tells him not to go. He goes anyway and returns with the animals, plus a borrowed bull and some chickens. One day Per Hansa discovers that someone has placed land markers on the land owned by the Tonsitans and the Olses. He collects the stakes and burns them. This upsets Beret, who views this as a sin. A group of Irish settlers come to the settlement and discover their stakes are gone, they have not registered their land. They are angry that the stakes have been burned. A fight breaks out, and the Irish are defeated. Hans Alsa, who is normally very gentle, wins a brutal fight, and the Irish move on. Per Hansa is a hero for his actions, but Beret is concerned about the growing violence. New Norwegians arrive and are convinced to stay, swelling the settlement. The men travel to town for supplies and Perhansa swaps potatoes for netting and learns how to whitewash his house. When winter comes, the settlers are forced to stay inside. Beret comes to hate her life, beginning to see it as punishment for the sin of premarital sex. Certain she will die in childbirth, she instructs that she be buried in the large trunk she brought, an heirloom. She almost dies but survives and her son is named Peter Seer, or Peter Victorious. A school is established, Henry Solemn, who speaks English, teaches. The men go for more supplies. During a blizzard, Perhansa is separated from the others, however, he finds the home where his friends are sheltering. They stay for two days at the village before returning home in better weather. The settlers discuss Americanizing their names, Perhansa decides to become home. Beret is upset by this, worrying that this new land is changing them for the worse. In the warmer weather, Perhansa travels to the Indian tribes to trade goods, buying several furs. He goes to Minnesota to sell them and makes a lot of money. Perhansa's land is superior to the others and he begins the planting season early. When a sudden frost hits, he worries he has ruined his crop, when the wheat begins to grow, he is overjoyed. A poor family arrives in the settlement, the husband has tied his wife to the wagon to prevent her from going back to where their son died of a disease. Per Hansa and Hans also go to bury the boy properly, but cannot find the boy's grave, the family leaves heartbroken. Affected by this episode, Beret covers all the windows in the house to block out evil. Locusts come and destroy the crops. Per Hansa goes home and finds that Beret has put herself and the children into the chest, claiming it is the only way to protect them from evil. The locusts return year after year, leaving everyone impoverished, but they lack the resources to go anywhere else. A minister arrives and holds a service at Perhansa's house and baptizes the camp's children. When it is Pedersir's turn, Beret protests that the name is evil. 
Perhansa talks to the minister about Beret's mental state. The minister speaks to Beret and calms her. When the minister returns in the fall, he has lost his faith, but his sermon is well received, and Beret surprises everyone by becoming herself again. During the winter a seemingly endless snowstorm threatens their survival. Perhansa falls ill and is tended by Beret. Beret insists that Perhansa must go find the minister. Perhansa heads out into the snow, he is found, frozen to death, the next spring. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.